Hi all, I'm Katie Taylor and I'm here today from the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority or UK AEA. And I'm Sophie Faldo and today we're going to be baking a recipe to demonstrate the link between baking and fusion. But perhaps you'd just like to tell us a little bit about fusion first. Fusion is the process that powers the sun and here at UK AEA we are trying to recreate that on Earth. We take our fuel and we heat it up really, really hot and it becomes a plasma. And within this plasma, the atoms can smush together and in doing so, they release some energy. The machine we have on site is known as JET, which we host on behalf of Eurofusion. And it's shaped like a donut. And that is why today we're going to be baking donuts. Could you tell me a little bit about your recipe? Absolutely. So this is based on one of my favourite baked goods, a cinnamon roll, and I've adapted it to make it into donuts. And it's super, super easy. Anybody can do it at home. Even me. Even you. <laughs> okay, so firstly, we're gonna mix the dry ingredients. So I've got 250 grams of self-raising flour. I'm gonna put that into the bowl. Next, we've got the spices. Okay, so I have got ground ginger. So two teaspoons of ground ginger and also my absolute favourite, which is the cinnamon, two teaspoons of that as well. So we've got raising agents in both the flour and I'm gonna add some baking powder as well. So a teaspoon of the baking powder, and then last dry ingredient is salt, just as a flavour enhancer. Half a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm just gonna give those a mix with my whisk just to combine them. Okay, so that's our dry ingredients all mixed now. Nice. So this is a little bit like the fuel we use to make our fusion reaction happen. There are three types of hydrogen. Normal hydrogen, which just has a proton. Uh, deuterium, which has a proton and a neutron. And tritium, which has a proton, a neutron, and another neutron. And it's tritium we use in our fusion reaction. And this can be got from lithium, which is also used in laptop batteries. Okay, so next we're gonna mix all of our wet ingredients. So in here, I've got 150 grams of boiling hot water. I'm gonna to add to it 100 grams of butter. This is unsalted butter. Then I've got 100 grams of light muscovado sugar, but to be honest, any sort of brown sugar will do. Whatever you've got, soft brown sugar, demerara sugar. And then I'm going to add 150 grams of golden syrup. Look at that, gorgeous. Tasty. Plenty of it too. There's a lot of that. There is a lot of that. <laughs> there we go. And then again, I'm just gonna give that a bit of a whisk until all of the butter is melted and all of the sugar is dissolved in the hot water. So why did you decide to work in fusion and how did you get involved in it? So I think I wanted to do something that made a difference and was in science and fusion fit that. Um, so once I got my degree, I joined the UK AEA graduate scheme and got it. Got it. Okay, so that is all melted, all the butter's melted and all the sugar is dissolved now. Very nice. And this is like the other type of hydrogen we use, deuterium, which is actually found in seawater. Okay, so now we're going to be adding the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. Nice. So what's happening here then? Once the leavening agents in the flour are hydrated, they're going to produce carbon dioxide. And the protein structures from the flour and the egg are going to capture those gas bubbles in the cake batter. Nice. It's kind of similar to how we use magnetic fields to contain the plasma. I mentioned that the, the plasma is charged, which means that it follows magnetic fields, like the magnetic fields that would exist between these magnets here. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little well in the flour, and I've just got one large egg, which I'm going to crack into the middle. And then we're going to be adding all of our wet, and as we go, I'm going to stir it in. I'm using a whisk to help break up any little bits as we go along. So you want to finish with a nice smooth batter without over mixing it because we don't want too much gluten. Every time I'm just incorporating a little bit more dry. And there we have our cake batter. Carbon dioxide bubbles are starting to form. Okay, so just to help me fill the little donut hole cavities, I am going to use a piping bag. So a little bit of the cake batter into the piping bag. And then I'm going to put 50 grams of the cake mixture in each of these little cavities. Because they, these are baked donuts, so this is the way we get the shape. These donut shaped trays that are holding the cake batter, it's like how we use the donut shape in our device to contain the plasma, uh, which we do using these giant magnetic coils. 
Oh, and this is what you were showing me earlier when we were on our site visit? It was, yeah. Earlier today, me and Sophie actually went around the site at UKEA and had a look around one of our fusion machines. And you can see it now, how it was shaped like a donut. It was great to see the fusion machine itself and really interesting to see how the magnets actually contain the plasma. So we use a circular shaped coil that goes around the top and a D-shaped coil that goes around the edge. And those together create that donut shape for our plasma. I think I was quite captivated by just the sheer scale of everything. And then actually being able to see the fusion plasma, that was pretty special. It is very cool. And pink. It is pink. It is pink. <laughs> <laughs> So now these are going to go into our preheated oven at 175 degrees centigrade and they're going to bake for about 12 minutes. Nice. It's kind of like how in fusion we need to get it up to really, really high temperatures to make fusion happen. So why does it need to be so hot for fusion to happen? The atoms within that plasma really don't want to fuse together and so you have to get them to incredibly high temperatures to give them the energy needed to allow that fusion reaction to happen. Oh, that's really good. I'm guessing the fusion machine gets a bit hotter than this oven, right? <laughs> it does a bit. <laughs> because it's held in place with the magnets, it's not too much of an issue. Although we do have special material surrounding it, just in case it does touch it. Oh, were those those tiles that we saw earlier? They were, yes, they were. Okay. The tiles around the machine are actually made of a special material that means that if the plasma, for whatever reason, does touch the wall, it doesn't melt. That was incredible when you told me that inside that machine with the plasma, it's one of the hottest places in the universe. That blew my mind. <laughs> Oh, you can smell those, don't they smell good? They smell amazing. <laughs> they look so good. So I need to get these uh, onto the cooling racks because we've greased them. They should come out fairly easily. The colour is really good. There we go. So we're just going to leave those to cool now. And you've got to leave them totally to cool before you put any frosting on. Otherwise, the frosting's just going to melt and they're going to look dreadful. So That's annoying. We have to be patient now. We do. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time to make the frosting. Oh, nice. So I've got 120 grams of cream cheese, 80 grams of unsalted butter, 300 grams of icing sugar, and then I've just got some maple syrup just to get a bit, little bit of flavour. So I'm going to start off by whipping up the cream cheese and the butter together. Got an electric whisk here just to make things a little bit easier for me. Okay, so I've whisked up the cream cheese and the butter and it's just nice and pale and fluffy and I'm going to start adding the icing sugar to it just a little bit at a time. This is the messy bit. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> and this is going to be quite a nice stiff frosting so we're going to use a palette knife to smush it onto the top. So icing sugar is just starting to loosen up the mixture a little bit. We'll go for the last load of icing sugar, all of it in at once. And then I'm just going to give it a beat just to make sure that it's nice and smooth just to finish it off. Last but not least, favourite bit, I'm going to add maple syrup. Not an awful lot, I just got two teaspoons in. Very generous teaspoons though, obviously. Excellent. <laughs> and just whisk that in. And there we have our first frosting. Ooh. Gorgeous, smooth, creamy. It's like a cheesecake. <laughs> it is just like a cheesecake. <laughs> Gotta test it though. Make sure there's enough maple syrup in there. Very important. Okay, Isn't yeah. that good? Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's acceptable. <laughs> so while we're waiting for the donuts to cool, we're gonna prepare some of the decoration and we're gonna be using some crushed biscuits. So Ooh. would you like to crush your biscuits? I'd love to crush a biscuit. Go for it. You know, this is just like, no, I can't think of an analogy. It's like crushing biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Make a little bit of a mess here. <laughs> I think my side's gonna be more messy than yours by the end of this. <laughs> you know, science is a bit of a mess sometimes, is that? Oh, there you go, you did come up with an analogy <laughs> in the end. This is very therapeutic. That should do. Excellent. Lovely, thank you very much. And now I'm gonna frost the donuts. And I'm going to try. So I'm just gonna use a palette knife and we're going for quite a rustic look. So just gonna go all the way round, making sure you're being fairly liberal. And then I'm just gonna make sure it's Nicely tucked and even around the inside and the outside edges. And then just finish it off just with some nice swirls to give it a nice textured pattern. And there we go. So what does the future got in store for Fusion? So similar to how these donuts will give us delicious energy that will power us, Fusion will hopefully do the same in the future. 
So at the moment, most fusion work going on around the world is in experiments and understanding the physics behind these processes. But in the future, we will hopefully build a fusion power plant, which is something I'm working on, that can deliver that delicious fusion energy into our homes. <laughs> that sounds really exciting. Okay, that's my six done. Do you want to have a go? I can, I can try it. Go for it. <laughs> Use the other side of the pipe knife. Oh. So the offset gives you the angular advantage. See, I'm learning. Oh. That's my science. Nice. <laughs> I don't think these are terrible. I think you're doing really good. <laughs> doing a great job. <laughs> okay, so now onto the decoration. So we've got the crushed biscuits that you crushed me earlier. I've just got a little technique just to make it a little bit neater. So I'm using a little bit of cardboard. A bit of paper will be fine with work just as well. Line of crumbs, and then I'm just gonna shuffle it along the edge. Just make it a nice little line of crumbs. Oh, that has nice precision. Oh, just like that. That looks good. There you go, now your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Dish sideways shake. There you go, that's it. So what do you like most about working in Fusion? I think I like the fact that I get to do a little bit of everything. My job's sort of quite diverse in that sense. Lots of different parts of science and engineering that I never thought would all come together in one. Were you always really sciencey? Is that your background? I've always just been interested in how things work really, I think. What do you like most about baking? I think, to me, baking is, is a form of art. So when I make a cake, particularly if it's a really complex wedding cake, multi-tiered, just seeing the finished product, and it's so great just to see a really happy reaction from, from the couple. It sounds amazing. Awesome, nice. that looks good. And just for the final, decadent, opulent, and totally unnecessary finishing touch, I've got some gold leaf. Oh. Just to give it a little bit of extra sparkle. So I've just got a little silicon poking device, but a paintbrush will do the same job. Just a couple of pieces just to make it look really special. So you just break off a little piece and as soon as it touches any moisture it immediately clings to it. I think I'm gonna leave mine without gold leaf. <laughs> it seems a bit challenging. Oh, I guess it's time to try them then. I think it might be. Let's go for it. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's not bad. <laughs> These are very good. It's quite messy to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how you know it's good. Delicious fusion energy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, thank you for having me along. I learned so much about fusion today. No, thank you. You taught me a load about baking. <laughs> it's been amazing. Well, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you give the recipe a try at home. And if you want to learn more about fusion, check out the UK Atomic Energy Authority.